Donuts. I got donuts. I got donuts. What's a donut? Mmm. Donuts. It looks wrong, but it is oh so right. Oh yeah. Just kidding. Welcome to another... Uh, that's going to really suck for people. Welcome to another episode of Duff and Donuts, your weekly Simpsons recap podcast out of a handful, apparently. I am your host, Kia Not Keith, and I am here today with my lovely partner in crime, my P.I.C.B. So, this time we're talking about episode six Moaning Lisa, and I'm gonna tell you what, guys. I I was very nervous to Google this episode for the notes. I, uh, you know, for reasons obviously. We're a PG podcast. I mean, that's a, leg- a legit concern. I mean, mm-hmm. I totally agree with you on that. Um, so we'll just jump right in. So the uh, chalkboard gag this time is I will not instigate revolution, which in this mm-hmm. episode he doesn't, but in later ones he does. Um, and then the couch gag, again, was a little simple this time. Uh, they all squeeze on the couch, Maggie pops up, and then Marge catches her. So just a uh, very, uh, you Very, know. you know, uh, these first couple of couch gags don't really wow people, you know what I mean? That's, right, that's it's, just, it's not super feel. creative yet, but it's going to get there. I feel, yeah, and 100% I feel like it's going to get creative. So let's just jump into this episode. This is a, it's a very interesting episode. To start with, like, uh, it starts with just Lisa just sitting there, looking at her mirror, like, looking just morose, like, she... Just tell, very sad. Just very sad. And so, like, you know, amidst all the chaos of the family, she's just very sad, like... You know, and, and what's funny, I actually noticed on the sink, I believe it's toothpaste, uh-huh. uh, perhaps, but it actually says the word glum. G-L-U-M, glum. It does, yeah. And I was like, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of cool, having them put that little Easter egg in there, kind of foreshadowing what's going on in the episode. Right. Um, you know, Homer knocks on the door, you know, he's like, what's taking so long? You know, he's a little upset that she's in there. No one really, you know, he's not concerned yet at this point. Um, they cut to the kitchen where everyone's going to have breakfast. Marge's necklace is white in this first frame. Um, I also noticed with the color scheme of the kitchen that the fridge is actually purple um, and not the usual green color, so things are still not quite, uh, you know, set in stone yet what the backgrounds of things look like. Right. And so, like, with this, this, with this, these opening scenes is kind of just, like, really hitting home that this is... It's going to be a Lisa-centric episode, but this episode also diverges into two pods, but not yet. But what I, what I wanted to really bring up is that, like, this is a really, for for cartoon, for for a, a show in the 90s. And for a comedy show. And for a comedy I... show, to tackle something like depression is, is really, really different, I guess, you know? And really that's, huge. Yeah. So with this, you know, we go into it, you know, um, they, uh, they talk about the cupcake and so Lisa just doesn't care. Again, this is like, this is depression. Like, I mean, there's obviously, before I say this, there's obviously different forms of depression. Like depression doesn't have one symptom. Right. And and definitely different levels of depression Right. But this is like, this is like angsty depression, I guess. Right. Marge says there's two cupcakes left and there's three of them. Uh, Lisa's like, you know, it doesn't really matter either way. They can have the cupcakes. Homer and Bart, they're not even concerned at all. They don't realize that she's upset. They're just like, yay, cupcakes. Um, you know, and around her, there's the shenanigans going on where Homer's searching for his keys. Um, you know, he left them in the door. Uh, they mentioned the infamous rumpus room in this episode too um that's another thing that simpsons fans know the rumpus room is not always there um in this particular episode it is Um, is the rumpus room that middle section that doesn't have the tv i believe they were well when they were playing the video game it looked like it was their living room but i assume that they were in the rumpus room okay so i'm really not i'm not a thousand percent sure what it actually looks like Um, fascinating yeah but you know, so Lisa goes to school. She's still having a hard time. She tries to play some 
some, you know, upbeat music and band, and Mr. Largo yells at her about it, you know, and she's just trying to play with her soul, you know, not conforming, just kind of being herself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, it gets shot down, so that makes her sad. Then they move on to lunch. And they get into a food fight? Yeah, Bart starts a food fight. You know, her friend Janie, which we see later in the series as a continuing character, tells her, like, hey, let's get into this. And Lisa's just like, no, I'm not going to participate. Um, that same mentality carries over into gym class. She keeps getting hit by dodgeballs, and, and she's not teacher. even trying to do anything about it. She's like, it's called dodgeball, Lisa. What are you doing? And she's like, I'm just sad. I don't want to play dodgeball. Right, she's just too sad to play. Um which no one understands still. You know, no one around her is showing her any kind of empathy at all. Right. They're like, you're a kid. What's wrong with you? Play dodgeball. Then we jump into Bart and Homer playing uh, Super Select Fest, which is a parody of what I assume to be Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, one of the best Super Nintendo games to exist in the universe. And it looks... The, the funny part is that the characters actually look like them, you know, in the, yeah, in the game. That, like, I think that's humorous as a as a person who watches boxing and stuff like those two are on different weight classes when you look at their size mm -hmm. that guy also don't forget to listen to my boxing podcast below the belt i'm kidding oh my gosh but uh yeah no and then like you know homer's losing his 49th consecutive loss in this game and bart's really rubbing it in you know yeah. he's pretending to be an announcer and uh just kind of really rubbing salt in the wound there so uh, they, uh, Marge comes in all concerned while this fight is going on, like, and like Homer, still not paying attention very much, is like more focused on this game, which you realize like that's their main center. Like this, this story is broken into two stories. Mm -hmm. The main focal point of each parent dealing with one of their children. Right. Homer's dealing with a compet, you know, competing against his son. His son. Um, Marge is like concerned about Lisa, you Com know. Like trying to be like, you know, don't be weird, man. Right. And, and you know, Homer, you know, he's a, he's a simple fellow, as we've discussed before. You know, he does not get it. It goes over his head. He's like, she doesn't look sad. There's no tears. Um, you know, he tries, though. He does tell her, like, hey, come up on my lap. Let's talk about it. Um, she, she has way too deep of an answer for him. You know, she's like, would it matter if I didn't exist? How can we go to sleep at night when people are starving out there? And, you know, his uh, his solution to that is, like, trying to bounce her on his knee, like, you know, wee! Like, you're a kid, forget about all this, you know? This doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretend it's not there. Um, as, a, as, a, as a parent, if, if, if our child were to give us existential questions like that, I would not know what the fuck to do, so I'm just I mean, I would concerned. try to give a... Did you just swear? No, I thought we were PG. We are PG. -ish. Um. Anyways, but I I would try to give a more more soulful answer. I mean, very, than, yes, than very much. Understandable, very much so. But like that, having be like, why are there people like dying and I'm alive? It's like, whoa, dog. Right. I don't know like, let like. me think about my answer for I a just, second. That's that's just personally how. Like again, this is again. I'm also watching these in the perspective as, like, a parent. So that that's another thing that's weird to me, like, watching cartoons in the perspective of parents. Instead like, of as a child watching well, it from the child's perspective. Right, because, like, you know, you and I just like to binge watch Malcolm in the Middle, and I'm just like, man, I understand Lois now. She does not suck. It is so true. I mean, she does go overboard and she's well, eccentric, so. but, I mean, I think I would lose my mind, too, if I had yeah. four sons who were absolute terrors so like, like she does. Having like so having someone ask you those questions is like it's hard. It's hard. It's tough. Like, right, and even Marge doesn't know what to do. Her her solution is she just draws Lisa a bath. You know, yeah. she's like, "Hey, go relax in the tub." And then Bart has to vacuum, and so Bart's all mad. So he's like doing right. it wrong. And well, Homer's like, you know, in in times of trouble, you got to go with what you know. So he punishes Bart. <laughs> like, you know, he's used to a, a a note a note getting sent home from school, and it's Bart's in trouble. It's not, you yeah. know, we have trouble with Lisa. And then Bart's like, I hope you liked your bath. And then it goes in this big thing, which I think is funny, which is like kind of hits home a little bit when we think about it. Is the uh, Bart and Lisa being like, Maggie, who do you love more? And she goes to the television. Yeah, go to the one you love best. Yeah, so it's just kind of like... <laughs> and she goes to the TV. It's just kind of like, ah, oh, man. 
I mean, it, you know, what's funny though is she actually did sit there and kind of think about it for a little well, bit. Yeah, she she yeah. was pondering. She heard she heard them talk. Yeah, she's like, she's, no, she's intelligent. Yeah, she's very it's, intelligent. It's proven already that she's intelligent. I'm sorry, I still love every time Homer's like, "Who's Margaret?" Yeah, I know <laughs> he doesn't remember her. I think it, that was supposed to be like an ongoing joke, and it just kind of fell off. After, I mean, it, like I think it's like it came in once season a season. Or yeah, it comes in at least once a season. Yeah, it's it, it was more frequent though in this yeah. this first one here. I didn't know Maggie's name was Margaret until we rewatched it. Just say it. Really? Yeah, I'm that guy. You're that guy. Yeah, I just knew. I thought her name was Maggie. Okay, so uh, diving back in here, Lisa goes upstairs to play her saxophone while Bart and Homer are playing that video game again. Um, Homer stomps upstairs, telling her to, you know, stop. He lost. Yeah, he lost the game. You know, he's like, "Oh, I was distracted by that racket." You know. I feel you, Homer. Um, I love distra- I love making distraction excuses too when I lose games. You do. You can't. Whenever I beat you in Smash Bros, you're always like, "Oh, it's the stupid game anyway." It is a dumb game. I don't like the controller on it. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is something that we continue to see throughout the series. Obviously, he tells her to stop playing. But this time, you know, she starts to cry. And I think at this point, it kind of hits him like, hey, there is something wrong. Yeah, I mean, of course. Like, if you're... I feel like that happens a lot, though, when, like, your kids start crying when you ask them what's wrong. And it's just like... He should have picked up on it sooner, but he didn't. Okay, as a... Okay, I'm, I'm not defending Homer for being dumb, but I'm also going to be, like, as dudes, and this is, like, breaking that line of gender so i'm gonna tread carefully with my explanation okay for you and the internet we weren't raised like that though depending how you were raised (laughs) right like most dudes aren't though they're not gonna be like oh man are you okay like bro do you want a hug i mean he does try though right you know he tells her well, you know, it's it's kind of like a backhanded thing because, like, he tells her to stop playing, and then she's like, oh, I'll just click, you know, I'll practice my fingering by clicking on the... Where's that going to bother you, too? Yeah, and he's like, oh, let's hear it first. And then he's like, okay, you can click as loud as you want. But I wonder, like, if that had been loud for him, if he would have been like, nah, don't do that, you know? I feel like, I feel like he dug himself a hole already, so he, he was trying to, to like, to yeah, that. and I feel like... I feel like, again, that's the thing that I can relate to about digging holes when it comes to having conversations with children. It's just like, mm, I'm just going to try to nip this in the bud as fast as I can. Yeah, do it. Like, ooh, I said the wrong thing. Yeah. No backpedaling now. Um, but anyway, so it goes to nighttime, and Lisa hears someone playing their saxophone out the window. Um, she sneaks out. And then, of course, we meet one of the most iconic characters, um, Simpson fans know, Bleeding Gums Murphy. Did you know he's voiced? by Mufasa. I did know that, actually. And Darth Vader. And Darth Vader. Yeah, they they bring that back around when um, he, he when passes he, when away. When he dies, and then, yeah, like, all the... They appear in the constellations, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Clouds. They appear in the clouds. <laughs> oh, the clouds. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was the clouds. Good like one. The Lion King. Right. I guess that makes more sense. Yeah. So, like, she meets Bleeding Gums Murphy, and he's like, do you want to know why they call me Bleeding Gums? <laughs> And he's like, why? Because I never went to a dentist. I love his exclamation, though. Like, I have enough pain in my life, like, without going to the dentist. And, okay, so this is, like, this is, like, your stereotypical, at the time, your stereotypical jazz artist. They're, like, kind of hurt. Like, my dad used to listen to a lot of jazz, so this is why I know about this stuff. But they're kind of like, uh, the world is morose, and I need this. Well, they're playing the blues. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a typical blues singer. Like, Elvis was a blues singer at one time. Johnny Cash was a blues singer. They all have pain, dog. Right. And he's supposed to be also a uh, parody of Louis Louis Armstrong, too. I can see that. I know, through two months, oh, That sounds like Bill Cosby. Sorry, I'm going to stop. What is stop. that? <laughs> um, but, yeah, then they flash back uh, to the Simpsons household where Marge and Homer are trying to sleep. Uh, but they're both having nightmares. Marge is thinking back to her childhood when her mom would tell her, like, hey, go put on a smile. The bigger your smile, it shows what a great mother you have, you know? Um, obviously reflecting what's going on in Marge's... Can I just say that's, like, legitimately, like, messed up to say It to is messed up to say. It's a lot like, of pressure to put on them. That's, like, like, I'm gonna, like... Show the world what a good mom you have. Yeah, like... Pretend to be happy. That's so <laughs> not bueno nowadays no, like no definitely not ooh. you want to have empathy yeah yeah um 
and then Homer's dream, of course, is, is just tucking back to that uh, subplot that they got going on. He's getting beat up, actually, by Bart in the, the boxing. Mike Tyson punch out. Yeah. Just like that, sorry. Yeah. I'm just calling him Mike Tyson punch out. Just no, you're good. Just call it as it is. Little Mac. But no, like, so they both wake up. Homer's screaming, and he has drool in his mouth, and like... I love going. like the tongue waggle yeah. when he when he's screaming. I love that. That's so iconic though. That, it that really Simpsons is. Tongue waggle. It's just like your tongue can't do that. You no, know? Like, but it, it's always been a fun thing to have in there. I think that like gives it heart in my yeah. opinion. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, then they flash back obviously to Lisa and Bleeding Gums, and they make that song together. Um, you know, and and he tells her that she's pretty good for a kid that doesn't have any actual problems. Which, you know, that's kind of a that's kind of a shot. You know, kind of shots fired there. I mean, okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying, and I think I think we all do this, and I know I did this a lot when I was doing stand up, making mm-hmm. fun of first world pro- problems, right? Versus third world problems, you like, know. Like the comparison is absolutely yeah. Gorgeous. Like I yeah. mean, like to be fair, bleeding gums is like, yo, I've never gone to the dentist. I have terrible gingivitis. I might be dying. I don't know. I don't trust doctors. And you're just complaining about a cupcake? Right, right. A cupcake? I wish I could eat a cupcake, but my teeth are so bad it hurts to even look at one. <laughs> but I, I also feel like his approach of, hey, I can't help you with your problems, but I can play music with you. Like, I think that's kind of what she needed. Right. And I think that, like, is the, I think, I think, I think that's, like, a thing, though. And I think that, like, to circle around, this is one of those times where we could talk about mental issues at the same time, talk about having fun, ha, 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 all together. But, like, I think that's, like, what a lot of people who have depression need, though. Sometimes distractions help, depending right. on the situation. But, like, there's a, there's too many people, though, and this is in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Like, even now, there's just a shit ton of people that are like, you know, you smile more. You do this. Be happy. Don't be worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Like, that stuff like that. But oh, like, I never thought of that. I'll just stop worrying. Right. You know what I mean, though? Like, that kind of stuff is just, like, you know, this is a really raw episode. Again, it like, really I'm is. sorry, like, everyone this is going to be, like, there's going to be a counter that's, like, this is the, like, 15th time Kian said this is a raw episode. But it really is. I mean, like, seriously. I like, mean, every episode is a little bit, like, well, maybe Like, Homer's Odyssey first, yeah. was... Like, they're all a little bit raw in their own manner. Like, this is, like, raw because of the fact that, like, again, I'm bringing this up again. No one talked about depression. Depression really wasn't... I don't even think depression was really kind of, like, like there was medication for... I don't even think there was even medication for depression yet around this time. Um... I think there was more just, like, therapy and talking it out. I think... Well, when I was in first grade, I got put on Prozac. Okay. So, um, around this time-ish... Right. Um, but you know what but I mean, But it wasn't, it, like, mental health in and of itself was not talked about. No, um, so this if, is another... If kids were acting up or something, the parents were just, like, they Bad would... parents. Yeah, like, or they would just uh, try to, like, punish them. They'd be like, act right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you're not acting right, get it together. Right. You so, know, like, like, there was ag- no empathy. Again, this is why I think this is a really important episode in my mind. It's because it's just, like, this is in the 90s, like, early 90s, first of all. Talking about, like, depression and mental illness, like, I'm going to put quote-unquote mental illness. I don't think they, like, really thought about the mental illness part, but they did really think about the depression of, like, what it would be like, like, living like this. Right, and, and think, she's in second grade right. with and depression. And I think that the idea of, like, Bleeding Guns Murphy saying, like, listen, I can't help you with your problem. You have your own stuff you need to deal with, but I can, like, just be here and we can, like, do music. Yeah, that we can is, do something you enjoy, kind of put a little extra right. something in your that life. That legit still, that, that stuff happens today, though, still, mm-hmm. B. That's what I'm trying to say, though, is just, like, that, like, when someone has depression in the modern times, the now times, and if you're listening to the future, I'm going to say 2019, ooh, future, but uh, um, people still do that, and that's the thing that blows my mind, is that, like, this is still a real problem that people have, is, like, hey, you should smile more, you look sad, stop doing that. It's like, dog, Why? Right, definitely. But I I do feel like this generation is starting to bridge that gap a bit where it's just kind of like, you know, same. Like I think we're all just raised depressed. Yeah, I think we all just have a lot of problems now. But, um, you know, I mean, empathy is higher than it used to be. Like, people have a a better understanding, I feel like. And 
you know, I think people have a right better track. understanding because people actually there's now money being put into like social sciences, like so, psychology and stuff like that. Yeah, that there's just, actually like uh, uh, people care. Yeah. So that's definitely like again one of these things where it's just like these quote unquote dark episodes really handle like a lot of modern day mental illness. Right. Like. And I mean, he he had his own take on it. You know, the blues isn't about uh, feeling better; it's about making other people feel worse. Right. You know, and I don't I don't know if you know he he was just joking when he said that, but he's right. kind of pretty serious when he said right. it. Right. Like, like just kind of funny, you know, well, like. I think, but that like again, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna incorporate this to my own personal kind of thing. It's just art in general helps express things when you don't have like other ways to express it, like comedians do that like I did that a lot when I was doing stand up Mm -hmm. it's a good way to express myself when I'm like anxious or like you know that's why you do it right and then there's like like, truth to his music you know his lyrics and Mm -hmm. stuff and so other people can kind of get that and relate back to it like oh hey he's going through something Mm -hmm. um so Marge comes to pick up Lisa because obviously she heard them playing outside the window just like and he's a stranger which you know this was a different time because I would personally like be freaking out like if my daughter was eight. I, I mean, she, you know, and she was you know found. I think she should have still been freaking out in the but middle they of were, the night on a bridge. But I with think a stranger. they were doing the, the joke. It was the joke of it. It's like you seem like a good person, but I'm sorry. Like she's the, like I, nothing personal. I just fear the unknown. Yeah, and then she drives off, which is funny. That was the joke. And, like, right. This is again. Me. But I mean that's a that's a grown man right. stranger with an eight year old girl right. like that it, you know right. that is scary because you don't know you know what I mean and uh, definitely she should have talked to her about like not leaving her room at night and sneaking off right you know but now we don't have that problem that's good right I mean that we know of at not least. yet knock on wood um so then it flashes to the morning and uh, Marge and Homer are talking to Bart in the kitchen like hey you know you love your sister go be nice to her. Um, so his idea to cheer her up is to make a prank phone call. Mm. Now, is this the second one, I believe? Yes. The second one in the series, um, he does the jock strap for, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, first name jock, last name strap. And, of course, Mo, Mo's tavern still looks different. You know, Mo's still, still wearing the, uh, pink apron, which I personally like. Um, but it's not, you know, the aesthetic of his tavern is def- different still. Um, but obviously the, the prank phone call doesn't cheer Lisa up any, and, um, Marge goes to drive her to band practice, and then they do, uh... Yeah, that's right, Bolorama birds down. Right, he hears that on the... The news. On the news, yeah. But, I mean, it it comes back, Yeah, that's that's kind of just a throwaway line. Right. It was just kind of like, because he was upset about it, but Marge was upset about it. Yeah, because he's trying to make, yeah, just getting one of those jokes. I, again... This is, this is just me coming from a person, like, my wife is not going to see the writing as much as I do on the walls when it comes to writing comedy, because, like, that's not how her brain works. But, like, personally, for me, I love early Simpsons because the jokes are just killer. I do love the humor. It's, it's Right, funny. but no, 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 I'm talking about, like, the buildup of the jokes, like, I think you and I will look, you and I look at things very differently. Mm -hmm. Where, like, the 90s was really big, and it's still big now, for, like, stand-up comedians to be writing on TV shows. Mm -hmm. But this, they, like, took three hours to write one joke. Right. And so, like, it's Like, they put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, it's so killer to watch, though. I love it. Um, So they break away into that little subplot again, where Homer actually goes to the arcade he gets a bunch of quarters, and he finds this cool kid who's really good at the... At Slugfest. Yeah, at Slugfest. And uh, he's like, hey, teach me what you know. And he, he literally just spends all day there doing bark that. Bark like a dog! Yeah, bark like a dog. <laughs> okay, Fido. He do actually it. did it. Yeah. Um, so he's doing it. He's out of quarters. And Homer's like, I think you taught me just enough. Then the mom... This is another one of those best jokes in the kitchen. Probably my favorite joke of this, of this episode... Is he like, you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, lady, I think my wife's calling me. Yeah, she's like, you're a grown man. Why are you playing video games? Yeah. Again, I think if it's time, because I'm a grown... I don't really play video games that much. I can't make that assumption. 
Uh, we know a lot of people in their 20s that play it. I love playing games. my Super Nintendo that I've had since I was a child. I will shamelessly play that. I play the cool SNES Mini that I have that has the games I like. Right. I don't know, something about, like, and, and we actually have an arcade here that has, like, the old school, like, Pac-Man and Frogger and Cubert and that kind of stuff. And King of Fighters. It's like, I get it. I get, like, the... Nintendo I get the arcade. appeal. Heck but, yeah. Like, but, um, like, um, so, they, they, uh, you know, Marge is taking Lisa back to the concert? Is it a concert? Uh, to band practice, to band I believe practice. it was. Okay. So she takes the takes her to band practice, and she's like, you know, you should smile more. Yeah, if you smile, you'll be popular, and boys will like you, and you'll get invited to parties, and then happiness will follow. Um, you know, so she had it backwards, and I, I feel like it came from an innocent place. Like, she was trying to give the advice that her mom gave her because she thought, well, you know, I'll pass down that motherly advice. Very much 100%, but this is also another one of the things where it's just kind of like you that like you're not your parent right you and don't so, have to pass down what your parents right did to you, you can be better if mm-hmm. you try and this... she sees that firsthand mm-hmm. uh lisa goes out smiling and she starts talking to these two boys um you know and they make a couple jerk remarks about oh i thought you were a brainiac but i guess you're okay you know that kind of thing and then the band teacher comes and joins in like oh we're not gonna have any outbursts today right um and then I think that's what hit Marge. You know, she yep. snaps and uh, gets Lisa back in the car and tells her, you know what, you just be sad if you want to. We love you. We're going to be here no matter what, which I love that. And I remember actually watching this this episode when I was a little girl and just totally loving that moment. Like, for me, it kind of hit home because I also suffer from depression and anxiety and I just love that moment between Marge and Lisa where she's just like, you know, be sad if you want to. And um, obviously having her mom's support made her legitimately happy. You know, she started to cheer up after that. She's like, this isn't a fake smile. I'm genuinely happy. That's yeah. super nice. I love that because it just, you know, it was a real genuine moment between the two where, hey, Marge is finally starting to understand. Like, you know, she she might be kind of naive on the topic of depression but she she understands like hey sometimes she's gonna be sad and that's that's okay you know we still love her we're still here for her um so then it goes ahead and cuts back to home where homer and bart are in their final round ever (laughs) and homer's just annihilating annihilating uh bart just like how i beat my wife during uh video during super smash bros on the wii u have mm-hmm. in real life yeah okay is that the story you go to sleep with at uh, night? not wii u switch oh on the switch yes on the switch definitely on the switch not on the wii u yeah. though so like i'm about to he's about he is about to win yeah he's it, and then it was and, he was down for the count yeah and then marge is like trying to get their attention and he's like no i'm almost there and then boop she unplugs the tv Hurt and dismayed, Bart pulls the biggest baller move. Is like I'm retiring, fifty and zero. I feel like that's not a baller move. I feel like that's such a a cop out on his part. That is like, such he, a baller. He knew he was gonna listen, lose. Listen, good boxers know when to quit. Know when to take their money. I mean, go. he could have given it to Homer. You know, he could have been like, "Hey, good job, Dad." Bart Simpson you know? is the Floyd Mayweather Jr. of video game boxing i mean i just feel bad for homer because he was so defeated you know like he was very sad about it um but obviously marge you know she has something more important to to talk about you know that hey lisa's starting to feel better um and she has this activity that we can all go do together so then it cuts away again and they're at that jazz club um that bleeding gum bleeding gums murphy told lisa about um the other night and he's singing her song up on stage and everyone's just kind of nodding their heads smiling to it and um the only part homer didn't like is the whole my dad acts like he belongs in a zoo part (laughs) you know he's like what (laughs) um but i thought that was a really cool way to end the episode kind of like incorporating that no 100 percent. i think it was super enjoyable so let's go into some trivia the idea for what was suggested by James Elbrook, who wanted to do an episode where Lee, 
Lisa was sad, but she did not know why. The writers also felt that they had done several jokey episodes on the show and wanted to try something new that was really emotional and sweet. And I think they hit it. Personally, for me, I think they hit it. I think it's a lovely episode. I agree. Definitely. Um, I do feel like Homer's Odyssey, though, was, was uh, very you know, one. very heartfelt as well. And the Christmas episode. Speaking of Homer's Odyssey, Bleeding Guns Murphy and Lisa are playing their saxophone on the same bridge that Homer tried to kill himself on Homer's Odyssey. Hmm. I guess I never even thought about it. Yeah. The title comes from the painting entitled Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, executed in the 16th century, which is now residing in the Lavar, the Louvre. Lavar? The Louvre <laughs> in Paris. Sorry, I don't speak French. I'm not your sister. We've been Le watching the, the Miraculous Health of Ladybug and Cat Noir, though. You should know how to say the Louvre. I don't pay attention to what French people say. They're oh, French people. Good grief. The song Lisa in this episode later appeared in expanded form in The Simpsons. Sing the Blues CD. Apparently that was a real CD. Had no idea. They made several. Did they? Mm -hmm. Simpsons Christmas Boogie. The original idea for this episode came from when James L. Brooks was working still on the 1978 TV show Taxi, where the idea was Alex would be sad for some unknown reason, but the script never came to be. Ah, so he took it over here. Some of the video games that can be seen at the arcade, Time Waster, Freeway, Pack Rat, Eat My Shorts, Nuclear Disaster, Rob, Do Let's Destroy, Escape from Grandma's House, and Itchy vs. Scratchy. Love it. The design for the boxing boxers in the video game Bart and Homer Play were loosely based on Homer and Bart, but the reference of the game was based on the character from Matt Groening's Life in Hell comic strip. You can really tell, though, because like with the Life in Hell comic strip, they're much more bolder lined than oh, yeah. they are in like the thing. So Lisa's school band practicing My Country Tis of Thee, the patriotic American song based on the melody of the British national anthem, God Save the Queen. I didn't never knew that. Miss Mr. Largo says to Lisa, There's no room for crazy bebop in my country tis of thee, a reference to bebop. Huh. Look at that. Bizarre. So let's round out with our final thoughts of the night or day, if you're listening to this of this episode my final thoughts would be this personally i think this is a very very and i'm going to say this i'm going to sound like a broken record i get it guys thank you i know they're gonna be like he a broken record everything's deep and it's a deep fresh yes i like this episode a lot i find this episode to be fun and heartwarming i find this episode to be uh, an episode in the 90s first of all again i'm looking at this through um the future vision Ooh, right future vision I'm looking at it like, I haven't seen an episode like this in any show for a while that hits on depression like this. So, I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Ooh, that's the highest one yet. Yes, it is. And I don't think it'll ever get any higher. I think Lisa, Moaning Lisa, wins. Plus, I think the name's funny. Right. Um, I... And definitely, yeah, just don't do, don't do Google image of that. Cause Incognito you're... search, Google it. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I agree with you definitely. Um, they, they had a mixture of heartfelt and funny. I, I mean, obviously the whole video game, uh, plot was put in there just to obviously put some light heartedness into the episode rather than like the whole thing just being about depression and everything. Um, but it also points out that, you know, everyone else's life around her is just so crazy while, you know, everyone's life is still going on while she's just kind of paused you know she's sad um i like that i relate to that i i totally get it you know the world doesn't stop just because you're sad you still have to get up you still have to go to school uh you still have to deal with your family members and i i really like the way that they presented that and i really as i mentioned earlier i love that moment between her and marge where marge finally gets it and um yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with a 9.5 as well, because honestly, I, I know I always parrot you, but you always go first. So, I mean, uh, yeah. You just like to steal my ideas. That's fine. I've had that happen. No, before. I mean, you okay. just, you always rate it before I get a chance to. So, I mean. Next who... time, fine. Episode 7, she's going to rate it before me. I would love to. Sounds like a plan. So, thank you all for listening. Do not forget to just, you know, share with friends. Have us a good listen. You know, do all that fun stuff. Also, you know, have a good day, guys, and stay awesome.